Quantum of Solace was Daniel Craig's second James Bond film and it's widely considered to be complete garbage but it's also a great example of how directing and editing can make or break a movie and that's what we will be analysing in today's video. Quick cuts are often found in modern action films these days where rapid editing can create a sense of urgency and intensity. This technique involves frequently shifting between shots, aiming to keep the viewer engaged by never allowing them to settle into any one perspective. However, this method requires a delicate balance. When overused, it can disorientate the viewer, making it difficult to understand what's happening and the overall flow of the action. For example, in the car chase sequence at the beginning of Quantum of Solace, James Bond is being pursued. The scene cuts rapidly between different camera angles, close-ups of James Bond's face, shots of the car tyres skidding and the pursuers shooting their weapons at James Bond's Aston Martin, and also wide shots of cars going through tunnels. Each cut lasts less than a second, barely giving the viewer any time to comprehend what's happening before shifting to the next shot. While this pace may seem to convey chaos, it ends up undermining the sense of spatial awareness. The constant cutting makes it difficult for the viewers to track where Bond and the bad guys are. Are they side by side, a few metres apart? Is Bond managing to evade the bad guys or is he falling into a trap? Dunno. This confusion reduces the tension of the chase because the stakes are unclear. In an effective car chase, the audience should feel the near misses and close calls, understanding how Bond or whoever the protagonist is, is manoeuvring through the danger. Without this clarity, the scene becomes visually overwhelming but also emotionally flat. A better example is the opening chase in Skyfall. It's great in using quick cuts while maintaining clarity. Here Bond is chasing a bad guy through tight alleys and across rooftops on a motorbike. The editing is fast, but the shots last just long enough to establish the geography of the chase. When Bond chases the bad guy onto the rooftops, we see a wide shot that shows both him and his target, then a close-up of Bond's determined facial expression, and back to the wider view as Bond continues to chase him. This scene from Skyfall succeeds because each cut builds on the previous one, providing a sense of continuity that allows viewers to keep track of where Bond and his enemy are. The sequence balances close-ups with wider shots, ensuring that while we get the intensity of Bond's focus, we never lose sight of the larger chase. As a result, the scene is both thrilling and easy to follow, making it more engaging for the audience. Now I want to talk about the 180 degree rule which is a fundamental principle in filmmaking and it suggests that the camera should stay on one side of an imaginary line while filming a scene. It helps to maintain spatial consistency and orientation for the viewer. When followed it ensures that the characters remain orientated in the same direction relative to each other, preserving the audience's understanding of the scene's geography or layout. Breaking this rule can be used stylistically but often results in confusion if it's not handled correctly. For example, during the scene where Bond fights a bad guy in Siena, there are moments where the 180 degree rule is broken. The perspective suddenly shifts, flipping the direction that each character is facing without an establishing shot that reorients the viewer. At one point, Bond might be seen facing left in a medium shot, and in the next cut, he appears to be facing right, which disrupts the audience's spatial understanding of their positions relative to each other, and it doesn't help the viewer in that this fight scene is so quickly cut together. By breaking the 180 degree rule without a clear purpose, or an establishing shot to help the viewer adjust, the film disrupts the audience's understanding of where Bond and the bad guy are in relation to each other. This kind of disorientation can be effective in some films, like when the goal is to unsettle the audience, but in an action film or a fight sequence like this, it more often than not frustrates the viewers by making the scene hard to follow. The fight sequence loses clarity and with it the emotional investment of Bond's struggle. Viewers become more focused on figuring out where the characters are rather than engaging with the tension of the fight. Fight. Compare this to the stairwell fight in Casino Royale where Bond and Vesper are attacked by two bad guys. This fight sequence follows the 180 degree rule rather effectively, keeping the camera on one side of the action. As Bond fights on the stairs, the camera remains consistent in its orientation which helps maintain a clear sense of space. Following the 180 degree rule in this sequence allows the audience to track the movement of the characters involved through the confined space on the stairwell. The rule allows for smooth continuity when cutting between medium shots of the struggle and wider shots of the entire stairwell, maintaining a consistent spatial relationship between Bond and his attackers and Vespa below. The clear spatial orientation makes the action more visceral and engaging. The audience can fully appreciate the physical danger of fighting on the stairwell, the height of each step adding to the tension of the scene. 
by keeping the characters' positions clear, the scene becomes not just a fight, but a suspenseful struggle for survival. It allows the viewer to focus on Bond's determination and his concern for Vesper, who is caught in the crossfire. Each cut builds on the previous one, maintaining the tension without confusion. Cutting for motion means editing a scene to focus on the flow of physical actions from one shot to the next, keeping the energy and pace high. While this can make a scene feel dynamic, relying too much on this technique can make scenes feel chaotic and lack emotional or narrative depth making it difficult for viewers to stay fully engaged in the action. In the final confrontation between Bond and Dominic Green, the editing leans heavily on quick cuts that follow the physical struggle between the two characters. As they fight in a burning facility, the sequence rapidly jumps between shots of Green swinging an axe, Bond dodging attacks, and the chaos of the building crumbling around them. Each action is quickly followed by another, creating a chaotic pace. However, the editing doesn't linger long enough on any one moment to allow the audience to register the desperate or intensity of the fight. The rapid cuts prioritise the continuity of movement, Green flailing with the axe, Bond evading, and the environmental destruction, but it fails to show the deeper stakes of the fight. While the scene is visually intense, the editing doesn't give time for the audience to absorb Bond's emotional state, or Dominic Green's desperation as he fights for his life. For example, when Green is cornered, the cuts are so fast that we miss out on seeing the fear or panic in his eyes. The result is a sequence that feels hectic and chaotic, but doesn't allow the viewer to connect with the character's motivations or the significance of the encounter. A more effective approach to action editing is seen in the train fight between Bond and Batista in Spectre. Uh, yeah, I know his name is Mr. Hinks, but I'm just going to call him Batista. In this scene, Bond and Batista are fighting inside a train car, with the editing balancing fast-paced action with moments that emphasise character and tension. While this scene is intense, the cuts are more deliberate, allowing the viewer to see each combatant's reactions and the physical toll the fight takes on them. When Batista throws Bond against the walls or smashes him through a table, the camera lingers just long enough to show the force and the impact. The editing inspector focuses on more than just the physical movements of the characters, it highlights their expressions, their struggle and the shift in balance of power throughout the fight. When Bond is on the verge of defeat, the scene slows down slightly to show his desperation, making his eventual comeback feel more rewarding. By emphasising the emotional beats of the fight, Spectre allows the audience to feel the weight of each blow and the stakes of the fight. This creates a more immersive and engaged experience that goes beyond the surface level intensity of quick cuts. By balancing the motion with the meaning behind the fight, the train sequence in Spectre draws viewers into the struggle. The audience is able to clearly follow what's happening, understanding how Bond's strength and resourcefulness are being tested in this fight. Each action builds on the previous one, leading to a climax resolution that feels earned. By contrast, the fight between Bond and Dominic Green in Quantum of Solace becomes muddled by its rapid pace, where the emphasis on constant movement overshadows the opportunity to explore the character's dynamics and motivations. And there we have it, Quantum of Solace is a prime example of how editing and directing can make or break an action movie. These aren't just problems found in Quantum of Solace though, they're becoming all too common in modern action films these days. In the rush to deliver thrills, many movies lose sight of what makes action truly engaging, the clarity, tension and emotional stakes that draw viewers into the story. Action is most powerful when we can follow it, when we can understand the stakes and when we can feel the weight of every punch and every risky manoeuvre. And that's the blunt truth of it.